from the perspective of someone who's there. You are looking live. This just in. Not my beat. Today's top story, the commanders are getting a lot of national attention. So let's bring in someone who uh, discusses them on a national level, who happens to be uh, the best friend of the show. Uh, definitely the best friend who has a national platform, but best friend of the show, period. Uh, with us Wednesdays during football season, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Clinton Yates. What up? Oh, that, may, that makes me feel good, Gregory. I will say one thing. For those of you out there who don't think that Ant does his job, I requested literally four minutes before this segment to get a third Paramore song into the rotation. And guess what? He did it. He knows what he's doing. That is what we call good work. How are you all today, gentlemen? Doing well. Anthony, how do you feel? I feel fantastic. (laughs) I I said nice things about Clint. He's feeling really good. Clint said nice things about you. Um, So, Anthony, you have to say nice things about me now. Or you can just wait until competition Wednesday at 530 and then make me really sad because of how poorly I picked games last week. I think I'll wait for the latter. Okay. Oh, screw you. Uh, All right. Smart man. Clinton, so you, when we were texting earlier to, to get uh, figure out what time you wanted to come on, you said you had some questions for me. Because all of a sudden, on, on that Around the Horn rundown, Reality sends it out and is like, hey, this is what we're talking about today. The old burgundy and gold are sitting there as a topic of discussion. First of all, let me ask you, how surprised are you that we are here four games into this season? I am not Super surprised in the context of the rest of the division in terms of the NFC East never looked that good. And it was just a matter of whether or not the commanders could sort of figure it out, toe the line, and go forward. I will say this. If you actually turn on your television right now, we're in a bit of a weird moment. You will see me talking about this exact topic. So I will ask you the same question that was asked of us, Gregory, but with a little bit of a twist, which is this. Is Devontae Adams a person you would want on the burgundy and gold, or as Jim Zorn used to call it, the maroon and black, at this moment <laughs> in terms of him getting out of town where he is and coming to Landover. Um, we obviously talked about this on the show yesterday. And Clearly. I, my, where I think, and it's interesting because, like, you have this, you know, it broke during the show. So you have this yeah. in the moment, and then you have the chance to read with some other people and, and also kind of sleep on it, think about it. I, don't think I've moved that much from yesterday. I'd say my price has maybe changed a little bit. If you can get Devontae Adams for not a lot of draft capital, a.k.a. if you can negotiate something better than whatever it is that, that they're telling Adam Schefter they want, I am interested in the idea of having Devontae Adams here. And I think part of that speaks, and the part that I think is un, undersold and undersaid by a lot of fans who are like, no way, don't bring in the new guy to mess with the juju, yada, yada, is... Jaden Daniels is the driver of the juju. Like, his ability to connect with everybody and to to make people feel included, to to build a good atmosphere, is so far and away, like, not just beyond his years, but beyond the average NFL quarterback who's been around a long time, that I think that Jaden would make sure that Devontae is, quote-unquote, in his place because he would make his place a place that Devontae wants to be. And so if you're telling me I can get that talent and and adjust this offense to take that next step with that kind of dude here, like I, I think that's a pretty big deal. You have to figure out the money. You have to figure out the compensation, and those are not small things. But on a, on a like fundamental level, I'm interested. I just don't know once you get to those really important other things, a.k.a. the money and the, co- the draft compensation going back in the trade, that it be worth doing at the end of it. Well, that's the whole issue, Craig, is that, yo, do not, in my opinion, you do not blow draft capital and you do not go that crazy over this guy who is already sort of disgruntled to some degree just for the sake of accelerating the progress. The progress, in my opinion, of what this offense and therefore what this team has been with this quarterback is already accelerated and somewhat ahead of schedule. Forty Burger on any team, as far as I'm concerned, as I'm sorry, I don't think anybody expected this team to put up that many points necessarily on a on competition at this early of the, of, of the season. And so for me, I'm looking at that as, okay, Devontae's a ball player. Devontae's a guy that probably changes their offense if you already have a super good team. Do I necessarily know that the commanders are a good team, or do I know that they are a team that can run their offense efficiently and a team that is maximizing their quarterback right now? As a result of that question that I asked in the latter, I'm not taking the risk on the human being as a result of what I want for the development to be. So think about it that way, Craig. Like, yo, are you, is, it, is, the, is the 
how do I say this? Is the clock really accelerated that quickly as a result of simply the opening of the player, that being Adams, and, you know, a couple weeks slash a month of this team being better on offense. I'm not sure that I agree with that. Look up his number on the contract next year. It's insane. You mentioned that. But for me, this is not a risk I take, and I don't think it's a crazy decision. I just don't look at that as something that I would necessarily want to do. But now we can talk about Jay. But that's the thing. Is like the con- So the details matter so much here because it's like, okay, if Correct. we take away all of that stuff, like do I want Devontae Adams on my football team from just like a football and locker room standpoint? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. I'm Brown fine with that. Room, yeah, I'm fine with that. Right? Yeah, I'm fine with it because in part, again, like Jaden and Devontae, by the way, know each other because Jaden spent some time around the Raiders last year because of Antonio Pierce. And so, okay. I mean, that could that could work both ways, though. If Antonio Pierce is ready to punt on Devontae Adams, is Jaden like, yeah, that might tell me something. Like, that's right, stuff you got to right, figure right. out. But, like, I also trust Adam Peters on the, the human management side to, to have those answers. But the details matter a lot here on the contract side of it because I, I think the reason you are willing to accelerate is you only get so long when a, a guy is on a rookie quarterback contract. And you can overpay other positions when you have that because your quarterback costs one-tenth, one-twentieth of the top, top guys in the league. Jaden's making like five, six mil probably, and Dak just signed for literally 60. So, like, we're talking one-tenth. I can afford a lot more, and if I can get an extra year of that, that's fine. And if I can get Devontae for two of those five years at big money, like, I can afford to do that. But there is limit. like, money's not fake. I will say his contract is one that can be restructured pretty easily. There's no guaranteed money on it moving forward. So for for Wash, like there's cap hits for uh, Vegas because they have prorated signing bonus, and now we're getting into the nitty gritty of it all. But yeah. like if you can figure out those details, again, I'm open to it. But I think to your point, anything that sacrifices in any remotely large way the long term build here and the idea that Adam Peters wants to build through the draft because that is typically where you get your blue chip guys. Like I I don't want to mess with that. Do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe, please, <laughs> as Bern is saying. Okay, I understand everything you're saying. But I was being on the other side of 30 is my main concern here regarding what we're talking about as far as money is concerned. Let this kid develop. We've talked about this plenty of times, Craig. Let him decide who he wants to be. Now, if Jaden Daniels comes out and says, hey, go get Devontae Adams, i probably do it on the other side of that, if, if that makes sense. Now, do I think that kid has enough sort of franchise capital to do something like that? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm still with you. The way that this has happened over these four weeks, to me, is an indication that whatever the plan already was is working to some degree. Blowing it up might not be what bringing Devontae is. is. However, shifting sort of aside, taking the – I don't know, the HOV lane, just because you kind of can, I don't necessarily know that I would do that in terms of the contract situation. So I say all this to say, Commander Stan, be happy. These are great options to have in the real world in terms of even thinking about this kind of thing, in terms of franchises that actual good players want to go to. This is not normal procedure for the Burgundy and Gold. I'm sorry, it's just not. And this is a great problem to have, which I commend Frankly, I can't believe I'm saying this. Did the commander's front office for being in the position to even say? Yeah, no, 100%. Clint Yates with us here on the Hoffman Show. I think this is going to be a destination for for guys in future years, and that's I think in large part to Adam and and his relationships around the league and his reputation. Um, I think right. Dan's as a head coach, like people underrated that at the beginning, and very quickly I think learned like, oh, that matters, and it matters in hiring coaches, but it also matters in recruiting players. When guys like Bobby Wagner sign, you're like, oh crap, Bobby Wagner wanted to come here. Sure. Shoot. Um, but I, I think to go back to the Jaden, like, Devontae part of this, this is actually, to me, like, the larger, more important point about Daniels is, one, I don't think he would go to a front office and and say, go get Devontae, because he literally said today, I don't care what y'all say, I'm still a rookie. His humility is real. It's not a fake thing. And it's certainly very different than, I don't know, when Bob was here and he's like, I'm the star or even easy, what Caleb's easy, but, easy. Okay. But it, I hear you. It, or like Caleb right now, I don't think Caleb's like, Hey, look at me. I'm the star. But like Chicago's like, Hey, he's the star. 
And Jaden, they don't look at Jaden that way and put that on him. And Jaden doesn't look at himself that way. That said, if Devontae came, I think Jaden could handle that. Like, I think Jaden's leadership is so solid that I actually don't worry about Devontae Adams coming in. One, I don't think Devontae is like some ter- terrible dude. I, I know obviously there's a little bit of diva there and he's obviously asking for a trade and that's never pretty. But I don't think Devontae is a bad dude. And to the extent that you have to deal with a, a diva receiver, I think Jaden is built for that and would be perfectly fine with it, which is actually more important than whether or not Devontae Adams comes here or not. First of all, he prefers a trade. Let's get the nomenclature correct. My I mean, bad. Prefers a trade. Be- Correct. Second of all, here's the thing. And I was talking to my man, Ben Solak, from ESPN on ESPN Daily. It's a podcast that I happen to host. How often is it, Craig? Clinton, I do believe it's daily. Thank you, sir. And what he said was, here's the deal with the commander's offense. And this is the question I have if somebody else comes into it at this point. In terms of the development, the commanders throw more screens than any team in the leg offensively. There's like a quarter of the percentage of what they throw. That's what he told me. If you bring a guy like Devontae in, and I'm not saying it can't make it better, but whatever the progression you were making playbook-wise was with Daniels, do you think that maybe there are, I don't want to say bigger issues to fix, but I don't want to take, think that one wide receiver is going to sort of solve all the other things that were already there that the offense was trying to work out to begin with, even if effective. Does that question make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I would say I would have two things in response to you slash Solak, who's one of my favorite people to talk ball with because he's really freaking Love smart. That. Um, Love that. But so one is the offense is evolving week over week in a borderline freakish way. And I'm not even Correct. sure which line, which uh, you know side of the border it's on. Like, it is stupid how quickly they are evolving. They did way more stuff from under – or not from under center, from drop back last week – took out a ton of the screens like the percentage came down in a significant way some of that's going to be week to week like hey we don't think the Cardinals pass rush is nearly as good now they got the Browns this week I would assume they up that percentage again but that's also good play calling to an extent but I do think you're seeing an evolution in Daniels and this offense week over week already that is going towards something where a Devontae Adams skill set is more useful than if you were just running a, m- a bunch of screens. The other part I don't of it. I disagree. Oh, go ahead. My yeah. Bad. The other part of it, though, is, and this is kind of the funny part of talking about this in, what are we, now October. Oh, my, Clint, yeah. did you know it's October? Yes, I did. It's spooky season, Gregory. I stay on top of that. I, on also, it's baseball playoff season. Of course, you knew it was yeah, October. An, that, that is spooky season. That's yeah, I'm just, I'm just, hey, it's the, it's the early middle part of football season. That's what my brain does. Anyway, the point is, we're in October. And Clinton, players aren't available. This isn't free agency. This isn't, right. you know, some of the other times in the calendar where you can acquire people. It's not even right at the trade deadline when there's maybe a couple of guys available. This is not a choice right now between Devontae Adams or a defensive end, Devontae Adams or a corner, Devontae Adams or whatever other things would probably be more useful if you have a pool of players to pick from. It's Devontae Adams or keep your powder dry and hope or Devontae Adams uh, or like hope for the trade deadline or don't do anything and just ride it out the rest of the year. So it's not the same as like, hey, we're in the middle of March and we're trying to figure out who's our number one free agent target. It's do we want Devontae Adams binary, yes or no? And if it's yes, then at what cost? And if no, like why not? You know, what are you using, say, the cap space you have this year for? What are you using the draft capital for? And the answer very well could be to draft football right. players next next April, and that is a perfectly fine answer. But it, it's not like there's uh, three offers on the table right now for other positions and Devontae Adams. No, and, and first of all, keep the powder dry. It's just a tremendous analogy on a lot of levels. But let me, Ben, I will pose the question to you. Do you think that the commanders need Devontae Adams to win the NFC East? I would posit that they do not. And if you, you, know, you use that as a data point on, again, the progression plan for this quarterback, well, then you don't throw something into the mix that's going to potentially jack up your salary cap situation just because you can do it. That's kind of where I am. This is working well. The train is moving along. Stopping at the local stops. Maybe it can run an express train back in the, you know, whatever. But, like, I just, I'm just not messing with it. And I know that that sounds ridiculous to say because the NFL is a win-now, change-all-the-time league. But, look, look at the rest of the division. You think this team is not going to beat the Browns? Do you think this team is going to beat the Browns, Greg? Right? Uh, I mean, yes, I do think they'll beat the Browns. I'm going to pick them okay. on Friday. So, I mean, I'm not going to go down the schedule with you. But my point is, if you had told us before the season, and by us, I mean the listeners, that, hey, 
here's what this team is going to do this season, and here's what they're going to do by, dare I say, keeping their powder clean, you would have taken it if, let's just say, it, I don't know, extrapolates out to, at the very least, playing for the NFC East in the last couple weeks of the season. You would have been fine with that. Taking the risk with a player who's past 30, who is clearly looking to go to a team that can win, I, I just don't think it's worth it. And I don't think it's a huge disaster if you take the risk. It's just not something I would do. I, I think I ultimately agree with you. I just I don't think once you get into the details, it's nearly as damaging. If you can avoid giving like giving up a second round pick's a hard sell for me. With Adam Peters as my That's GM. What I'm saying. And, and like, but I don't think like I think Devontae's still great. Him being on the other side of thirty doesn't really bother me. If I if I'm looking at one to two years, they have the cap space. They have a, as much or more than cap space than basically every team in the league. Like they have yeah. a quarterback on a rookie co- contract that is not due for an extension until as long as you can be due for one because he's a rookie. Um, so it's not like you're three years into a, a rookie quarterback contract. So th- there's a lot of that stuff that actually doesn't worry me that much. And Devontae is like I think Terry's amazing and underrated like I like Terry more than a lot of the really smart analysts out there like eh, like he's good but he maybe not like I think there's the top tier of guys of Jefferson and Chase and then like the next tier whatever your tier is like Terry's in there I think he's that good but I think Devonte is in that top tier and that is a game changer and so you have like I have to think about it but I think ultimately I land where you are and I would actually Clinton to, to wrap us up here I'd be curious like yeah. if, if this came up in the, the panel discussion because um, I'm hosting a radio show as you guys are talking on television, so it's, it's hard for me to, to consume both. Um, like, you look at what Houston's going through this year, and they're playing all right, but like the, the seamless integration of Joe Mixon, who obviously is hurt, and Stefan Diggs, it's not like you just add guys in and it works great, even when you have an offseason. I think the idea of building it from within and through the draft and making sure that every guy that comes through your building that you want to be a star is exactly what you want and you have hand selected is important to how they're building this. And I trust that Adam Peters can do that because he did it once already as the assistant GM in San Francisco. And so I, I think that that is like, look, they, they obviously traded for McCaffrey and like that was a huge deal for them, but he fit exactly right. what they want. I think Devontae's great. I don't know that he's exactly what they want here, which I think is why I ultimately, even though I have to think about it long and hard, unlike Ayuk, who wasn't really that hard to think about for me to say, say no, like I ultimately, I think, agree with you that I wouldn't do it. Let me say this lastly. This is a totally separate departure just because we have to show love to the late, great Dikembe Mutombo, who I first saw when I was seven years old as a Georgetown Hoyas fan. This man was a humanitarian and a tremendous basketball player who has grown the game on a lot of levels. I'm sorry I'm switching gears. I just needed to say this for the market because for those of y'all who know about how the Hoyas roll and the man that John Thompson built and ultimately went on to become one of the greatest basketball shot blockers we've ever seen, he is my favorite Georgetown Hoyas center of all time, Dikembe Mutombo, and I wish that man to rest in power what a guy. What a human. Hall of Famer at the Game of Life. Thank you, Craig. 100% uh, well said. Thank you for sharing that at the end. Uh, it's Clinton Yates, everybody. You can catch him on Around the Horn and ESPN Daily, which Clinton is available daily. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.